America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We shall never surrender. Welcome back to the War Kitchen. Continuing our series of Christmas foods for the downtrodden, we are going to satisfy a bit of a sweet tooth with another Victorian Christmas delicacy, candied orange slices. During the Victorian era, many poor families could not afford the extravagant cakes, candies, and pies that many affluent families were able to provide for their Christmas feast. Candied orange slices were a good substitute and were readily available in many parts of the United Kingdom, although they were still considered a delicacy due to mostly geography. For a European island nation, fruits from tropical areas, such as oranges, were hard to come by. However, over time, the sprawling British Empire was able to import many delicacies from her colonies in more tropical environments, making oranges one of their main import products. This allowed Victorians to be able to purchase oranges for recipes and for gifts to others at Christmas. Many Christmas stockings would have included oranges along with nuts, candies, and other small handmade gifts. This historic recipe is still used today in many parts of the world at Christmas. Christmas time. We have modernized it a bit to appeal to a more American palate by reducing the tartness and increasing the sweetness. So let's get started. The first step is to cut your oranges into even slices about one quarter of an inch in thickness. If you cut them any thinner than this, the slices might not survive the candying process. And if the slices are too thick, this will lengthen the time it takes for them to dry. In a large pot, combine the water and orange slices and bring to a boil. Continue cooking everything for approximately two minutes. This process will reduce the bitterness of the orange peel. Once boiled, immediately place them in a container of ice water. This will stop the cooking process and prevent them from cooking on their own after removing from the heat. You can then pour out the boiled water, we don't need that anymore. But we do need the pot, so using the same pot to conserve resources, combine two cups of water and two cups of granulated sugar and bring to a boil. Reduce the heat on your stove top to medium to high and put the orange slices in. Let the slices simmer, not boil, for approximately one hour, stirring every 10 to 15 minutes to coat them well. It is important that you not let the mixture get too hot, otherwise it will burn, so you need to keep an eye on it for a bit until you can get the temperature dialed in just right for the perfect simmer. After about an hour, the orange slices should appear to be lighter around the edges and translucent. If the oranges are not translucent, continue cooking for another 15 minutes. But once your orange slices are done, place them on a cookie sheet with a cooling rack to cool and dry. You Using a cooling rack will allow the excess sugar water to drip off onto the cookie sheet below and make it easier for them to dry. And now the wait is on because it will take approximately 24 hours for the slices to dry. In order to conserve resources again, you can save the liquid that the oranges were boiled in, this, this sugar water concoction, and you can use it in other recipes, such as homemade orangeade, orange pound cake, orange and cranberry muffins, and so on. After the orange slices are dry, or at least mostly dry, sprinkle additional granulated sugar on each side and coat evenly. If you really have a sweet tooth like us, you can also just dunk the slices in a bowl of sugar. And if you prefer to use some other kind of sweetener like stevia or monk fruit, you can make substitutions quite easily. But just be advised, you might have to reduce the amount of alternative sweetener to avoid the aftertaste that sometimes accompanies these kinds of sweeteners. Once you coat your slices in your choice of sweetener, you're done. Slices can be stored in an airtight container and enjoyed whenever you like. So if you'd like a sweet and tangy taste of the Victorian era, try these easy-to-make candied orange slices. 